So hi everyone, um, what we're going to talk about in this module is backtesting and how to backtest properly because a lot of people, I think they rush this process and um, they don't do it properly and to be fair, it's the only way you're truly going to understand how your system works. Now, if you don't know your rough drawdown uh, you're going to have over the period of X amount of trades or X amount of years and you start trading live and you hit a drawdown of like five or six seven percent you might start freaking out going oh my god my system's broken it doesn't work what do i do um so by doing back testing it can eliminate fear when you actually go and and trade live it can actually keep you a bit open-minded and relaxed to say you know what i saw this happen in my back testing okay um i understand that I've got, a, I can have a drawdown of around sort of 6, 7%, 2%, 4%, whatever it may be. And you can expect it. Now, it's never going to be 100%, but it will be close, okay? And as long as you stick to your rules and you, you follow the process of what your back testing was, um, you should be pretty close, all right? Unless something obviously happens emotionally, um, psychologically, fundamentally, and, and it really um you have quite a bad week now that does happen i'm not going to say it doesn't but anyway slightly off the subject okay let's get back to um um the the process of of testing now there's a couple of ways of testing okay one of them is literally to uh look at a chart like this um i don't know what your system will be so I'm just going to pretend that we're, we're taking a pullback trade and a trend continuation. Now, if I'm looking at the chart like this, I can see the market has pushed up, okay, pulled back and continued. Now, I can say to myself, well, yeah, this was a nice pullback. Uh, we had it into, you know, a bit, bit of structure, for example. Um, I don't know if you use fibs. Oh, look, there, there was fib confluence there, okay, or some sort of EMA. And then you can be like, yep, yeah, perfect. I took the trade here, all right? And on this particular trade, I'm going to put my stops here and I'm going to go for a target like this, two to one. Lovely, hit targets. Let's enter that into a spreadsheet. Now, I understand if you don't have the charting packages or the facility to do bar replay, um, this will be an easy option. But this is completely wrong, okay? This is not the way to do backtesting because you can see what's going to happen. You can see how far the market's moved up. You can say to yourself, oh, I would have gone for two to one on this, right? You can say to yourself, oh, I would have put my stops here because I can blatantly see that the next candle never faked me out or wicked me out, for example, okay? Um and then you can see the markets push down here and then we've started pushing low and you can be like, yeah, well, I'm not going to take this pullback because it's too big of a pullback or or I'm not going to take this one because um, I don't like this structure level now. Because you know that if you do another two to one, you're potentially not going to hit it and then it's going to come down and hit your stop. You start throwing all these different things out there that you wouldn't see doing live testing. So why test this way if you're going to start picking and choosing when you're going to take trades and when you're not going to take trades, okay? Now that might be slightly a um, bit of a lame example, but it happens. And believe me, when we want to test this way by looking at the whole chart, our eyes will pick out the winners, all right? They'll miss the losers, they'll pick out the winners, and um, our results will look phenomenal. Then we go to trade and then we like, wow, you know, what's happening to our trading? Why Why is the results not the same as my back testing? It's because you picked out the winners while you was testing, okay? So if you don't have the facility to um, do bar replay, what you can do is you can have the chart like this, for example. Let's just use this example again, right? And you can have it at the end like this and say right the market's moving up okay i can see there's a level of structure here for example 
and I'm waiting for the market to pull back down into that structure and what you'll do is on your keyboard you would play it bar by bar till you get into that level of structure if you do that is and then you'll say to yourself right no nope, didn't get into structure and the market moved away from me missed the trade now you can see how by me doing it bar by bar has given me a different outlook okay has given me a different look on this trade I never took this trade why because it didn't come down to my structure level it never touched the level I wanted it to touch if that's your rules obviously okay we're just making this up as we go along for demonstration purposes but when we was looking at the chart like this and we saw it was going up we was like yeah well I know there's structure here and you've drawn this massive structure zone because you want it to come in and touch that level oh look there we go look it touched because of this all right and then we would have bought so you can do it bar by bar um it will be a lot more beneficial for you literally like this bar by bar and then when your rules are met you then take the trade and then you mark out your trade for example i don't know if it's like this and then you play it out and you see whether you hit target or not okay now the third way is i think the best way of backtesting and that is using some sort of bar replay mode now trading view has a really good one which is this bar replay button here for example and we're just going to go back to uh, this example here what we can do is we can drop this line in like this and now we can't see the future and we can manipulate the chart we can do what we want and we can really start looking at right where is this market likely to come into where are we likely to see the market pull into what are we likely to um uh, where are we likely to take our trade okay so we can see the market's pushed up pulled back pushed up okay and um, we can start looking into it blowing things up looking at different time frames go five minute 15 minute and we can really start to play with this and start saying, oh, well, we've got structure levels here, we've got this, we've got that. And then you can play it out and think, oh, well, there we go. Look, we've pulled back into a, a, some sort of zone. We're pushing up now. We may want to take a trade here. I don't know if that meets your rules. Stops under this structure. Target up there. Okay, and then you can play it out and, and so on, so on. So this is a really good way of, of testing because you've got the opportunity to do bar replay and you can't see the future and you can't make up a scenario of what's going to happen you are completely blind to what's about to happen and this is the way you're going to get the truest possible results in your back testing and this is going to be the cleanest um way of analyzing the charts as well without any interruptions whatsoever and without any doubt in your mind all right so bar replay mode that is um absolutely key for me okay any system i test bar replay mode now trading view has one you need to pay for the subscription service there's another one called soft fx which is on a platform called mt4 and also if you just go into google and search um simulation forex kind of simulation um there are other ones out there there's a few web-based ones as well where you can do like replay modes and back testing simulations okay now the next thing is what do we actually need to log so we've got our setup okay we we've we know we're looking for whatever candle formation it is we know we want our entry to go at a certain point we know we want our stop to go at a certain point and our target to go at a certain point but what data do we really need on a spreadsheet is just having the entry stop and target enough for us to say that's all I need for backtesting. Well, I'm going to give you some um, some headings, OK, or categories you can put into your backtesting spreadsheet to make it better. So you can actually look at the results and say, you know what, this is what um i need to do or this is what i need to tweak this doesn't look right um and you can kind of play about with it a little bit obviously you may need some um spreadsheets that got a bit of coding to help you do some of this but um you can easily easily get that done 
So let's get the text tool out and we'll write some things down that potentially um, we need, okay? So first things first is the date, okay? You need to know what date uh, you're taking your trade. And um, that way you can keep a log of where you are in your backtesting. Another good one from um, is to have the time of day. Time of day, okay? Now, with time of day, you want to be testing the times you're actually going to be trading. There's no point in testing trades at 3 o'clock in the morning when you know you're going to be sleeping. Like, let's be fair, what's the point, okay? If you know that you work, let's say, evenings, you can trade in the mornings. So test from, let's say, 8 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon when you know you're going to go work at 3, for example. Um, or if you work during the day, you ideally test the evenings because you know you're going to be home of an evening and, and that's where you really want to test to see is it going to work for you. But if you want to test all hours of the day, okay, if you want to test um, sort of almost like 24 hours around the clock, you can do. One, this gives you um, a bulk of data to actually filter through. But also, let's say you travel. Let's say for your job you travel and you want to trade when you're in different countries or in different time zones. At least you've got an idea of okay, if I'm in this time zone, does my system work during this time and this time? And you can check. You can check whether it's prof profitable during um, them time periods and whether it's worth actually trading um, during that time. So time of day, you've got two choices. If you know you're going to always be set um, trading in the time, same time zone, I would just test that time zone um, of them hours you can trade. But if you're someone that travels a lot and is gonna, you know you're going to be in different time zones, I would just test around the clock. Um, that way you can filter out what times of day you're going to trade depending on where you are. Um, the next one, uh, the pair. So what currency pairs are you going to test? Um, ideally, you want to do one system, one pair. Once you complete that, then you can add another pair and another pair. It doesn't really matter. Um, I would just go through them until you've got enough that warrants you um, for your trading day. So if you're a day trader and you're in and out of the markets or you're a scalper, you may just need a few pairs, okay, like a handful, four pairs, five pairs, three pairs even. Um, but if you're a swing trader, so you're going to be... Uh, trading kind of more long term uh, once a week uh, maybe looking at charts once a day something like that you may want a lot more pairs because um, the opportunities will be more far and few because it takes longer for them to play out so that how many pairs you test will all boil down to you okay but make sure you do one at a time um, complete one and then move on to the next now once you complete the one you can trade that uh, while you're testing the next one um, then we go on to entry, okay, entry, um, stops, and targets. Pretty self-explanatory, you want to know where you're getting in, okay, the price you're getting in. You want to know how many pips or the price of where your stop's going to go, and same with targets, um, whether you want to do that in pips or whether you want to do that as a price level. Um, pips is easier because you can calculate a lot more stuff with pips. Um, so whether you're risking like 10 pips to make 20 pips or 20 pips to make 60, 70, 80 pips, whatever it may be. It's just easier to calculate um, with a spreadsheet and moving forward with things like lot sizing and account percentages and stuff like that. If you've got the price um, of the currency pair at the time, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because you then have to sit there and work out, well, how many pips was it, and this and that, and it gets a bit complicated. So stick to pips if you can. Um, then what we need is, um, are we going long or short? Okay. Now you might be, um, you might be thinking, well, 
Why do I need to know if I'm going long or short? You might find that your bias on the market is always short. Every single trade you're taking is short, short, short. And you're never taking buys. And your system isn't working. You're always losing. At least if you're mapping out whether you're going long or short on the currency pair. And you're always going short because your eyes see that. Now some people have this problem. They either keep buying or they keep selling. Because they've got like a psychological block. And they think the market's always going to go in that direction. But the system doesn't work. It always loses. And at least by mapping out or logging whether you're going long or short, you can then see that for yourself and say, you know what? If only I just took more longs, um, I would have had the winning system. Um, there's actually a system that me and my business partner have um, been testing. And we literally only take longs. It, 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 we done it on longs and shorts. And we completely took out the shorts because the shorts were just losing money head over heels on the system and now it's it's literally just a long bias trading system and we wouldn't have known that if we didn't log whether we was going long or short on the trade um on the trades we was logging in our back testing so it's a food for thought um definitely something to have in your back testing okay um entry reason uh entry reason okay what is your entry reason? Are you taking it on a candle formation? Are you taking it on the same candle formation every time? Are you looking at some sort of EMA cross? Are you looking at a, an indicator of some sort of an RSI overbought or oversold? Um, a free bar reversal? Um, what, whatever the entry reason is, log it. Okay. Um, there's been so many times I've done back testing and I've come back to some back testing results. Um, after a long while and I'm like mm, what is this strategy like why was I entering what was my entry reason I don't understand was it a candlestick formation was it some sort of indicator and I have no idea because I never logged the entry reason and I, I it kind of outlines what the system is um, as well so add your entry reason and then what you can do is if you've got different entry reasons while you're back testing you can then filter through and see, well, which entry reason was the most profitable? Is it um, an engulfing candle? Is it an inside bar? Is it a pin bar? Um, is it a doji candle? Is it EMA cross? Whatever it may be, you can then filter out and see, well, which one is actually the most profitable? And you can go with that one. Um, now, depending on how you've got your spreadsheet coded, you may automatically get win or loss. Um, but you can log whether it's a win um, or a loss. Okay. And that way, then you can see, well, what's my win percentage? Um, and obviously, this will then determine on your risk to reward as well. Are you going for like a, a three to one? Are you going for one to one, two to one, whatever it may be? You can then start to look at your win to loss um, ratio on your system and you can kind of start judging how often am I going to be right, okay? Out of every 10 trades, out of every 20, out of 50, 100 trades, how often am I likely to be right? What is my win to loss ratio? Will this make me profitable, okay? Um, and uh, we obviously show you things like that as well. We teach things like that. But generally, if you've got something like um, a 50% 50, 50, uh, win rate with like a 2 to 1 happy days, um, you know, you'd be printing money all day long. If you've got like a 3 to 1, you can afford to have like a 40% win rate, maybe even a 35, 30% um, maybe even depending on your strategy. If you start going to the one to ones, um, risk to reward, ideally you want like a 55 and up. Si the higher the better. So I would say 60, 65 up will be when you start making uh, decent returns, okay? So win to loss ratio um, with your risk to reward ratio, it, it, it really um, balances out and 
it will tell you whether you're going to be profitable or not. Now, finally, um, what you want to log as well is whether you're logging pips, okay, or percentage. Um, so let's just do a stroke percent, um, percent gain, okay. Now, this is when I say pip or percent gain, this is whether you've won or lost X amount of pips or whether you've won or lost an X um, amount of percent on your capital. So if you're risking, let's say, 10 pips to make 20 pips, have you lost 10 pips on that trade or have you made 20 pips on that trade? You'll log it. Now, if your spreadsheet is telling you in percent gains, you might say, am I risking 1% to make 2% um, depending on whether you lose or win the trade you will put down well I made 1% or I made 2% um, on that particular trade okay so the pips or the percent gain of um, your stop and your target whichever one you're going to do so there's um, there's there's a few things to um, have a think about okay um see what you think log these in a spreadsheet okay have headings for them start logging your back testing properly and then what you can do is you can start looking at the results and filtering through what is more profitable what is not more profitable and then you'll have a better idea moving forward for your forward testing or even um going live trading so i hope that helps with back testing um, any questions please feel free to contact me or comment below this video and please like share and subscribe as well thank you